good you weren't recording the fact that we're smugglers. <laughs> well, now I am. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what you're smuggling or from where, so you're good. <laughs> uh, well, welcome, everybody. It's really good to see everybody. Yes, this is a, I'm with Justin, this is a busy time of the year um, for a lot of people. So, um, so I, I wasn't here last week, but I'm happy to help facilitate things if maybe folks who were here could also kind of help me. We could, how about this? It's facilitation by committee. Does that work for everybody? There's Matt. Hi, my hey, apologies. Matt. No worries. I think we can get started with the chat channel inclusivity metric that we kind of sort of somewhat finalized last week. Awesome. And Justin, I believe I saw you cleaned up the comments. So thank you for that. And the goal for today was to give it one final look. And if we all agree to move it into Markdown and onto the website. Right on. Georg, is this also in the spreadsheet? Good question. I can check. I believe we have it in the spreadsheet. Okay. So it used to be communication channels, and now it's listed as public chat channels in row 62. 62, OK. And we need to update chat that channel. to chat channel inclusivity. Right on. OK. I'll do that. So is the proposal gear right now to give it a last read? Sorry, that is you're correct. Eating. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's fine. I just had a craving for some sweets. It's this it's time of the year. <laughs> it's it's hard to hold chocolate and not eat chocolate, so <laughs> it's an impossible task.
So I just read through. Thank you to whoever is accepting changes. All the way at the end, we have uh, some ideas that were not included in the metric um, to have surveys of committee members. Then we had some Likert scale items. My question here is, do we want to add that back or is there a reason why we are excluding surveys as a possible data collection strategy? I think for, for the work content at the bottom, that was where we were thinking that could be a different metric to measure because it was kind of more about communication, like whether you feel welcomed in the chats, whether um, like the, the channels are moderated. I think this metric is looking more at the platforms itself um, versus the how the community communicates on the platform. If, if that, does that make sense? It yeah. makes sense to me and that's how I read it too. I had not really seen this metric, you know, like in this level of detail. And when I read it, I was thinking considerably more about what you were talking about, Justin, like the, the platforms that are available to us to encourage people to have discussions in the community, to make sure we're not excluding people, to make sure that, you know, these, it felt more like that than about the content within the channels themselves. It, I think that's what you were saying. And I agree with you. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Makes sense. So maybe one thing could we, we could do is figure out where we want to put that for now. Oops, sorry, go ahead, Elizabeth. Oh, no worries. I was just going to say, should we add the word platform to the title of this metric to differentiate it from the other metric that's more about content? Probably helpful. I guess it's a matter of like, I think what we mean by channel and platform is probably ambiguous. I guess we could because I, I saw that sometimes in the document too, in the metric that we were kind of jumping between those two words and it wasn't exactly clear which one or what the difference was between channel and platform. So we could, we could just go with platform if, if I, that seems to be what we ended up using in the document anyways. So I'd be okay with that. So then it would be chat platform inclusivity. And then the other metric that would focus on the individual would be something like whatever, chat discussion <laughs> inclusivity or something along those lines. Maybe like chat culture or something, yeah. something yep. like that. And I, I even think too, when I was reading this metric, that I mean, there, there are very much related metrics, which could be things like um, documentation platform inclusivity, um, things like work platform inclusivity. So I'm thinking about our calls with um, folks in Asia Pacific region, we've had to change the way that we do, <clears throat> sorry, minutes and documentation, just so everybody has access to the tools, which I think is a little bit different than chat, but I can certainly see a related set of metrics here. I think the related metric we already have is the documentation accessibility Metric. Yes, you're right.
Cool. So I think that looks like all the feedback is mostly addressed in the doc. So if if we feel good about it, I could take this into a, a pull request on GitHub. Have it, I'll have to look up the process, but um, we can move that move that there if we feel good about it and uh, work on getting it published. I say yes. You had one lingering comment, Justin. Maybe. Um, there was also the blog post that we could we could look at too, really quick. I mean, there's not a whole lot there. It's just like a page and a half, but there's a cool infographic. It's there's no poop emojis this time, but you know, it works. Oh yeah, you you missed that, Matt. I, I, was say, I am, I am clearly missing a <laughs> reference, but <laughs> we we had an emoji scale when we were talking about different chat platforms, where we, whether we rated them on open source or how open their APIs were, and uh, the poop emoji and a couple of others popped up there. <laughs> poop, poop emoji. Um, just there's makes a link me to laugh, no matter what. Just saying that <laughs> phrase. <laughs> So there is a link to the blog post draft that I put in the Zoom chat. You can find it there. Um, there's a few edits that are still pending there, but for the most part, it's just looking for a quick review and we could look at getting that published. Yeah, thank you for creating the infographic. Uh, the only update I would recommend is on Slack personal support to put uh, skeptical <laughs> emoji because Slack changed its API and we're no longer able to get all the useful data that we were able to get before. That's interesting. Okay. That's good to know. So I can go, I can go and make that edit then. Yeah. And move, maybe move it down with the other skeptical. <laughs> Smiley. So thank you for editing the blog post. It was a very yeah. brief <laughs> five minute kind of thing last week. But other than that, I think this has been really helpful for me. So it's cool to see how this metric has changed since you know the last three three different names we we've given it. So I think this is a, a cool a cool place to get to with this metric. So I can take the action to um, get the metric onto a GitHub pull request, and it's just in the diversity inclusion GitHub repo. That is correct. And okay, so add the markdown file, and then in the what what group is this in? What focus area? The DNI. project and community. So within DNI, we have seven focus areas, uh, and one of them is project and community, where chat platform inclusivity is part of. And so, in that focus area, we need to add a link to the metric itself, to the new markdown file. Got it. So I can work on doing that and then I'll just do a quick update on the, the infographic for Slack. But that's that's all from me for the inclusivity metric. Awesome. Just Thanks, awesome. Matt. I just yeah. And I can take the action item of publishing the blog post. Gotta say, DNI, the, the DNI working group is always crazy productive. So, <laughs> really. You can tell we're being productive because we're so quiet. That's right.
So what are we doing next? I think we're done with the chat platform inclusivity metric and with the blog post. Should we move on to documentation discoverability? Yes. <laughs> I sense hesitation. <laughs> uh, we've been working on this one for a long time. Let's get it wrapped up. Gotcha. Alternatively, we can do the miscellaneous item in the notes. Justin was asking for an update from the badging program. I would like, yeah, let's talk about that. That's pretty nice. Matt's here. Yeah. Sorry, we're in the middle of a move, so it's been a little hectic. You can see the cats are going everywhere. But um, yeah, I'm really excited to announce that the um, badging project has assigned its first badge about six minutes ago. Um, and we are very, I, I'll, I'll um, show the issue here. Um, the process uh, has let itself, it, it's gone really well. Um, it looks like the bot's being worked on right now um, for some improvements in a more stable hosting environment, which is good. Um, we ran into some bot issues, but we managed to get it going. And if you look on the main repo link here, um, you can see that we've added it to the list. This is specifically FOSS backstage is the event that we badged and they earned a gold badge. They got almost every check in the whole list. Um, so that was really good. I can take any questions or any comments too. Yeah, I'm with Ruth, yay. So, I mean, this is, so this is um, really congratulations to, to you and everybody who's been part of that part of that team um this is a, quite a bit of work that has i think the you know the side comment of hey we should have a dni badging program from a while ago <laughs> it's resulted in uh, quite a bit of work um and thought process about how to get it done so anyway just awesome for everybody involved well, thank you. I mean, that's all I really had. I'm just really happy about it. <laughs> we also I have go ahead, Gary. Yeah. some events that have expressed interest. Um, you know, the Linux Foundation is looking at using our badges and we have several other conversations ongoing, thanks to the outreach team. Yeah, I think I, I think at least on the last email chain that there may be a couple more events that would actually apply this week, which would be great. So um, it's just really great to see momentum. <laughs> Process done, <laughs> or at least in place and some momentum building, so. And from the badging meeting we had earlier in this week, I realized that or earlier today, actually, uh, I realized that um, not a lot of people know about the handbook, like the badging documentation in the handbook, which we have pretty much all the information you need to know. And I've learned some things about badging from it myself. Um, I'll put a link in here, but um, that's a great resource to learn more about it. Should we include, is that included in the GitHub repo? Like for the, that for the handbook? Yeah. I'm not sure. At least. Yes, it is. Gotcha. We're working on a lot of things for January already. And then 2021, we have some goals that we're building out. So, yeah. Awesome. All right, there's there's the update. Miscellaneous done. Um, 
So Ruth had a comment about the badge in the chat to announce the first badge on Twitter, which I know we can do. There are several ways we can do it. Um, does anyone no, have an idea from the Twitter account and then we'll all retweet it. I think that makes the most sense. Because yeah. we do have a chaos community Twitter, right? Yeah, Elizabeth and I both have access to yeah. that. So it seems straightforward enough for Elizabeth. Tweet it out. Fox backstage. First badge. Woo. <laughs> and we all retweet. The power of the retweet. Sorry, Justin had a question too, just in terms of ChaosCon 2021. So obviously we officially canceled, like in line with um brussels you know in january so that's done um i think the one thing that we're working on right now i don't know that it's dni related necessarily but um there's a um workshop is that what we're calling it a workshop that's being run in shanghai a meetup a, a, a chaos meetup um that shoya is is running at her university in Shanghai and um, King from Huawei, I think is also helping kind of coordinate the efforts there. So um, we're doing some pre-recorded presentations. So Ray Paik is gonna be doing a pre-recorded presentation. I think Elizabeth is gonna be doing a pre-recorded presentation. Do you know if there's any others, Elizabeth or Georg? I don't think there are at this time. Um, okay. So I think they might have space for maybe one more small one if somebody wants to Wait, you um, just do one. You asked. <laughs> <laughs> or, or actually, Ruth, Ruth just said, Ruth just volunteered with many E's. So I think that's a <laughs> Ruth, yes. <laughs> so, Ruth, awesome. do, do you know what? Yeah. Go ahead, Elizabeth. I was just going to say that would be awesome. And I was going to ask her exactly what you were going to So go ahead. Do you know what you'd want to talk about? <laughs> okay, no problem. Would anybody else like to? I mean, it's it wasn't that there's, I think, just one slot left, so. It's really just about the work that you're doing and chaos. It could be about a metric or the metrics development process, about how metrics inform the work that you're doing at your org. You know, I think a lot of this meetup is just trying to introduce people to what chaos, the project is about, kind of at that highest level, right? And how they can get how, involved. How about a quick intro to Grimolab and Coltrin? Right on. I'm happy to do that. And how you can get involved on the developer side. Very much so. <laughs> and I can, the, the meetup is gonna be on, and then I think they're also, Elizabeth, it's gonna be on the 27th of December is when it is. And are they gonna be doing some breakout sessions or some work, is that also happening? My understanding is yes. Um, I haven't seen a finalized agenda, but I think that was going to be the bulk of the meetup is to have breakout sessions and then come together to discuss more um, more issues that are, that pertain. I think, oh, um, I think Daniel might be doing a presentation on InnerSource for them since that seems to be a pretty hot topic for them as well. Um, so, but yeah, I think um, I think it's mostly just an informal Kind of get together and help promote chaos in the in the communities over there. Awesome. 
So Justin, that's still 2020. I think we still, we're still doing things in this year. Um, I think the in terms of 2021, I would suspect that we run a chaos con with Open Source Summit North America. That has always worked well in the past. Um, I always forget when it is because it moves so often, but I want to say it's in August. And I want to say they're planning on doing that in person. In Vancouver, in Vancouver. I think. Yeah. Which I Back to the ocean. Wishful, wishful thinking, but. Um, it is. And my yeah. guess is that if it turns virtual, we won't have chaos con again. At least that the appetite for running these things virtual seems to be pretty low. Or if we do it, have it separate. Yeah. Because the Linux Foundation is doing full day events and those get really long. So yep. having it like a couple weeks before or after, I think, and only doing a half a day might be to our advantage of getting okay. involved. Gotcha. Um, I know Open Infra is planning virtual still next year. So it's interesting that Linux Foundation is planning in person um, and we'll readdress later in the year if things go back to normal, but we're kind of planning that they aren't. Okay, just have that mindset and okay. So um, what would people think about it? Definitely being optimistic. Yeah, I think I like optimism. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, but there's a um, lot of contracts involved that have to change if you're moving oh, yes. your location. Supposedly Vancouver is being really good about working with people, but the facility that we were going to, we're hosting in Berlin, it was really hard to get them to change to 2021. And now we're asking them to change to 2022. Gotcha. Just kind of talking through this, it made me wonder, you know, we do have just thinking out loud here, we have community bridge funds. I mean, what would we ever think about um, for, say, just pretending chaos con happened in um, Vancouver, like providing travel stipends, you know, for people who wanted to participate? It wouldn't be like the full cost of participating, but something we could do. I know I traveled to a lot of OpenStack summits on the travel program, and it's very much welcomed and accepted. Um, and even if we decide we want to do something and we don't quite have enough funds, you know, we could take donations to increase the travel. Yeah. So um, hotels in Vancouver were a little on the expensive side. I know um, travel usually does not include food, so anything we can do for conference passes, which Linux Foundation might give us, mm -hmm. um, something to help hotels and air airfare. Mm -hmm. I think if we targeted to those two things, um, I think would help participants get there and with the, and doing it as a diversity and inclusion mm -hmm. platform, I think would help get us some new members from places we don't normally get contributors from. Yeah, listening to you talk, I wonder like if we could do something like say if, again, pretending chaos con happens um, that, you know, that if a person gets a paper or a presentation accepted, there would be an opportunity to apply for travel funds from the chaos project, maybe limited, right? We don't have a ton of money, right? Um, but also then trying to work with the LF by saying, and you could also get a free registration for this. OSSNA. I don't know that they would for getting accepted to chaos. Con. Okay. Cause I was going to say these should be giving free to their speakers, but yeah, I mean, even if it was a uh, discounted, we could probably work with that. Okay. They might be, they might be pretty open to the idea of kind of a, at least for select people who are yeah. presenting at chaos con to provide free registration. And especially if it's diversity and inclusion related, we yep. can probably talk them into it. Um, are these use it or lose it type funds? Should we look at maybe possible online events or programs that we could sponsor someone to if we're going to lose the funding? Uh, no, we're not going to lose the okay. funding. So we can it's... hang on to it. All right. Good yep. to know. That was all from Justin's chat question, just so you know. <laughs> 
It was a big off topic question. <laughs> <laughs> and it resulted in a, it was a really good conversation. I think it's good stuff to think through. Is there anything else in the agenda we wanted to cover for today? I tweeted that tweet. So go retweet the tweet that I tweeted. Did you put a link in the chat? Uh, yeah, hang on one sec. For those of us who are lazy. There you go. Thank you. Um, one other thing maybe we should discuss is meeting schedule for the next coming weeks. Are we going to host? Are we not going to host so that we can like spread the word if we're taking a break? So chaos has canceled meetings like the project for the week of Christmas, the 21st through the 25th and the week of New Year's, the 28th okay. through the 1st. So those are just off. Okay, Am that's I, everybody. Did, I, yeah, I think that's everybody. Is that right, Elizabeth? Badging's doing that too. So the next week would just be our last meeting until 2021. Okay, we're retweeted. Right on, Justin. Enjoy your time. Yeah, I guess this will be the last one of the, the new year, or 2020. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to add in something. Uh, yeah, so for um, first back, um, Anita is actually speaking in first back. So I just want to compliment more on them being diverse and inclusive. Yeah. Ruth, could you say that again? I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Oh yeah, so I, I said, um, Anita, she's actually, she actually joined this meeting sometimes. She's also speaking up, she's speaking up first, first back. So that's like showing how diverse and inclusive they are. Gotcha, thank you. All right. So, so what did we decide to do about next week? We can't see next week. I think we're meeting, aren't we? I think Justin will be here, but. Okay. Um, quick note for chaos community uh, on, the, on the right of me. But um, the FOSS backstage is, um, they have a different hashtag than, or at than the one you use. Just to mention. <laughs> Dang it. It's, if if so you go to that boring. app, they actually link to another app. So it's, it's not a big deal. You know, we're all here. If you want to just delete that tweet and write a new one, we'll retweet it again. Yep. Sorry, I had one job, one job today. <laughs> Do that, one tweet. Okay, hold on. They look identical until you look at the tweets. I do have a, a quick question about 2021, and my apologies if I uh, missed this while I was checking on my daughter. We'll start up again the week of the fourth at same times. Okay. Yes. Uh, now we're still meeting one more time next week, and then again in January, same time, same place. Yeah, and the badging meeting. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, please. Uh, badging is, is important for other oh, folks that I interact with regularly. It's a so. it's an important project. It wasn't an important thing I had to say. <laughs> it was more that uh, in the badging meeting, I actually thought it was next week that it was canceled. And I told everybody, don't come back next week. And then I realized I had I had to go fix that. <laughs> but uh, we, we've, we've resolved that issue. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. 
Um, I, uh, I'm trying to get uh, other committees for the work I do with IEEE scheduled and I wanted to make sure that I reserve these times. So thank you guys. Right on, well, thanks everybody. That's good seeing you all. Cool, thanks all. Thank you. Bye -bye. And uh, have a happy new year and happy holidays. Yeah. Happy thanks new year, Justin. I'll see you guys next week. Yep. Bye. Except you, of course. Bye. Bye.